This is holiday season. I'm sure you all know that. And I just want to acknowledge that tonight, a lot of people will be celebrating the new year. And as the world celebrates the new year, I'm sure that the skies over Sydney will be lit up something like this. But thinking about holidays, where would you prefer to be? In the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere? Do we like beach holidays? I certainly do. And at this time of year, it's a time to sit back, to think about maybe the holidays that Jesus talked about. And Jesus went on holidays, and he also talked about holidays. It was the best of times. A man had two sons. There's nothing more that gives joy and a sense of pride to a heart of a father than to have a son. And it was the very best of times. A man then had two sons, and they were very different. The older one was compliant, responsible, and always did what he understood to be right. And as he grew, the little brother arrived with a scream, and he was oftentimes in, <clears throat> uh, lacking at, at the attention that was needed. And Big Brother sometimes had to take over the role of being a second father for him. So little brother was impulsive. He had a short-term memory loss, and, but he could concentrate very hard on all the things that he really enjoyed. But working out in the hot sun, herding sheep, herding goats, that wasn't fun. He'd rather be down the swimming hole and shouting and water bombing with his mates. It was the best of times, and it was the worst of times. One day, little brother came along and said, effectively, Dad, I wish you were dead. Give me my inheritance now. Now, in the Jewish culture, doing something like this was tantamount to asking for expulsion from the family. It was really amazing that the father actually went along. And after a lot of haggling, he sold a third of his property. And he gave his son the proceeds. Now, I'm sure that this type of behavior would have set tongues wagging in the Jewish community. Because there were Jewish stories about a father with two sons. And when this story came to an end, it was usually not a happy ending. So little brother took off, and there were many places he could have gone. It says he went into a far country. Now Strabo was a geographer and a philosopher back in Jesus' time, and Strabo actually mapped the known world in Jesus' time in approximately 24 AD. And in the middle of that map, you can see that the Tigris and the Euphrates River form quite a lot of the center of that picture. Back three and a half thousand years before Jesus' time, <clears throat> people had found the opium poppy growing in Mesopotamia. And the Sumerians then passed on the information to the Assyrians, who passed it on to the Babylonians, who passed it on to um, the traders. And about a thousand years BC, the traders took it to Egypt. And then about 300 BC, Alexander and his troops actually took it to India um, in some of his conquests. So I would think 
that little brother had time, and with his personality and biochemistry, he had time to find out about addiction. And he was addicted to spending money. He had a wonderful time wherever it was that he chose to travel. And there were plenty of people who were prepared to help him spend it. And then, perhaps under the influence of alcohol or drugs, he found out the hard way that life is sometimes a contract. When we do contracts, like, I want to rent my house to you and you want to occupy it. <coughs> A piece of paper or a formal agreement in front of witnesses is arranged. So, in the Jewish world, there were law keepers and there were law breakers. Those were the two classifications of people. And you like to do business with law keepers. But human nature happens and something goes wrong. And when we live by law, you have to fulfill your contract. And if you don't, there is manipulation and bullying and blame, attention seeking, lying, abuse, self-seeking, and the whole relationship becomes very egocentric. So when the money ran out, the prodigal son found himself being transported on a car at someone else's will to the country estate. And there he was dumped off in the pig pen. Just beyond my reach Where only memory is allowed I see clearly now Time doesn't erase the colours there Reaching for you I've got to find my way back home Loneliness deepens my despair Hoping you're still there I'm lonely, Lord, I'm ready to come home My own left you all alone for much too long I want to forget ugly stains I want to wash them in your rain I want to laugh with you
only love I've left you all alone for much too long. I'm lonely, Lord. I'm ready to come home. My only love, I've left you all. When he was in want, he came to his senses. And I wonder if we've been through that experience of wandering a long way and then realising it's a long way back. But he made that decision and went to the father. He didn't know what the reception would be. He certainly knew that in the Jewish society, he'd probably end up cast out again. But here, Jesus' story takes a new twist from what the rabbis used to tell. Jesus' story would have been outrageous in his society of rule keepers. So the father ran. This was totally unthinkable. You pick up your long skirt and you run and the servants are left behind, I wonder how many days or how many years the father had made that pilgrimage to the front gate, waiting for his son to come. But come he did, and there was much joy in the father's heart. The son could barely get out the first line of his speech and the father's hugs crushed him, crushed it all out of him. <clears throat> Come along, everybody. He sent the servants out to the villages because he had to reinstate his son. His son had come home and he was so joyful. That joy had to be shared with all of the villagers and let them know that my youngest son is reinstated in the family. So he said, kill the fatted calf and we will make merry. But Big Brother was out in the field and he heard the sounds coming from home and he asked a servant, what's going on? Your brother's returned, he said. And Big Brother wasn't happy. I wonder if... Dad's going to shift half of my inheritance back to little brother. Because when money talks, that's what money says. But the father did something else unthinkable because it was against all convention that any son would not come to a feast that the father put on for everybody, including the villagers, and especially to kill the fatted calf. But Big Brother had to have his say. He said, I've worked for you all these years, and you've never given me a goat to have fun with my friends. And this, your son, has spent a third of the inheritance and you welcome him home and he definitely did not want to go in. But the father did something unimaginable. He came out of the party and invited him in. He didn't want any friction between the brothers. And let's look at the father the father loved. There was no contracts. There was a covenant of grace with his sons that he wanted them to understand. And when you have a covenant of grace, 
With the Holy Spirit's empowerment, there's empathetic listening and dialogue and healing of relationships. And eventually we grow together into maturity and caring and sharing that love that has been poured out on us. I want to just go back to this picture. In this picture, there's something else. There's people gathered around a table and they're going to have a party and parties and holidays all go together. But I want you to have a look. Big Brother wanted to eat goat meat and Father was saying, come and have something better. The fatted calf was a symbol of covenant, of empowerment, and of grace. <clears throat> so today, we have the choice. Every day, we make choices. And what's our choice for 2023? We can have a covenant style, a contract style relationship in our lives, a contract of I do this, you do that. Or we can have a covenant of grace where we relate with love, with forgiveness, with reconciliation. And I want to look at the Father. The Father was prepared to kill his prized possession, the fatted calf. And that fatted calf reconciles us. His prized possession was his son. And today, we can recognise how much that sacrifice raises us up and how deep the Father's love is.
Father in heaven, your love broke all reasonable grounds and we offer our lives in deep commitment to you. Thank you for your redeeming grace and help us to share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen.